Welcome to the second video in a three video discussion outlining the demand side for the market of loanable funds. If you did not watch the first video, I strongly suggest you do so. Uh, you can do that by clicking here. Uh, these videos are created by myself, James Tierney, and I'm going to walk you through this second video. The second video is going to introduce you to how the demand curve for loanable funds is created and how it ties to the underlying theory from video one. What we're going to do is we're going to do a simple example with five different firms, firm A, B, C, D, and E, and they have expected returns on investment of a future project of 2.5%, 3.1%, 4.7%, 5.4%, and 8.9% respectively. What we'll do is we'll change the interest rate and we're going to see which firms decide to take out a loan and so we can start to build the quantity of loanable funds. Let's say the interest rate was equal to 9%, a very high interest rate, and all of these firms at that interest rate of 9% would choose to not take on the new project. And this is because their expected return on investment would be less than the interest rate they'd have to pay on the loan in order to take on this project. Let's change that interest rate and say it goes down to 7%. Firm E now, since their expected return on investment is 8.9%, would take on the new project. But the rest of the firms would continue to not take on this project because the interest rate is still higher than what they expect to get back uh, on this project. Let's continue with this example and lower the interest rate to 4%. This is the case, now firms C and D are going to take on the new project. Firms A and B still would not take on the project because that interest rate of 4% is still above their 2.5 and 3.1% of expected return on investment. If we lower the interest rate all the way down to 2%, all of these firms would choose to take on the new project because all of their expected return on investments would be greater than the interest rate. As you can see, what we did is we looked at that balance, like we did in the first video, between the interest rate and the expected return on investment. Now, obviously, both of these things are changing at all times, so it's really hard to look at it uh, unless we hold something constant. In this example, we held the expected return on investment for each firm constant. And what we did was we changed the interest rate. What we noticed is that if we lowered the interest rate, we saw more firms investing in the project. If we did it backwards and we raised the interest rate, we would have seen less firms taking on the project. And so this is going to show us that the relationship between the interest rate and the number of firms who are taking on additional projects, which we're going to represent as the quantity of loanable funds that are going to be demanded in society, it's going to have a negative relationship. Remember, that's all a graph is. It's just a relationship between two variables. In our case, we're going to look at the variables of nominal interest rate on the y-axis and the quantity of loanable funds on the x-axis. And we just talked about how the relationship on the demand side is going to be negative. What we did in the example previous was we lowered the interest rate. And as we lowered this interest rate, we saw more firms taking on projects and therefore more firms taking out more loans and therefore more quantity of loanable funds demanded in our market. And we saw that increase. What we notice here is if the interest rate changes, we actually see a movement along the demand curve for loanable funds. And that's a key point. A change in the interest rate results in a movement along the demand curve for loanable funds it does not cause the demand curve for loanable funds to shift. We are going to look at the shift variables for the demand curve for loanable funds in the next video, which you can access by clicking here.